Muy buenas noches a todos. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and uh, Madam Minister of Foreign Affairs of Canada, uh, Melanie Jolie. Uh, también, por supuesto, eh, agradecemos. Melanie Jolie, we are thankful for the presence of Marcelo Ebrard Casobon, Minister to Foreign affairs in Mexico, and most especially the attendance of the negotiators of this very important declaration that is uh, the decisive action of the, these three countries to go forward to promote in promoting the anti-racism, -raci inclusive and equal societies, most especially democratic societies. And so let us listen to the message of Madam Minister of Foreign Affairs from Canada, Melanie Jolie. Thank you. Thank you for this kind presentation. In Thank you so much for being with us today, and thank you for addressing this important topics on inclusivity, inclusion, and opportunity to succeed, no matter the race, religion, gender, uh, identity, or orientation. As leaders from Canada, the US, and Mexico, we have a responsibility to combat discrimination and hate in all its forms. Today, we're committing to doing just that. By signing the Declaration for Racial Equity and Inclusion, we are pledging to uproot deep and long-standing inequalities. We know we can't change the past, but we can work towards a more just and inclusive future. This declaration is a historic step in our work to eradicate deep and deep-seated injustice. Diversity is a fact but inclusion is a choice. How we choose to incorporate the diversity of our communities can mean the difference between a stagnant and thriving country and, and continent. While we have certainly made progress, systemic racism and bigotry is still a daily reality for many. It's dehumanizing, humiliating, and above all else, above all else unacceptable. And it has no place in society. That's why Canada has been taking action. As we are engaged on the path of reconciliation, we have continued to tackle systemic inequities and discrimination against indigenous peoples of Canada. We sat also uh, down and, and, and listened to marginalized communities incorporating their recommendation in the new Canadian anti-racism strategy. The work to Right, our societies of, of intolerance and will not be easy, but it will be necessary. Canada is by no means immune to intolerance. Anti-Indigenous, anti-Black, anti-Asian, and anti-Semitic hate have sharply risen. And Muslim communities in Canada have experienced several horrific, deadly Islamophobic attacks in recent years. That is why we must take further action. In our upcoming action on combating hate, we will address this head on. With both our friends in Mexico and the United States, Canada is committed to work together and to accept all people as they are, without any violence, without any bias, and together. Together, we will use our leadership and use our platforms to change our attitudes and behaviors. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much, Madame Jolie. And now, Secretary Blinken. Es un enorme honor para mí estar con ustedes y con todos. I'm really honored to be seated here with my friends, Marcelo and, and Melanie, to sign what is uh, an important declaration. Um, and you heard Melanie address it so eloquently. It goes to a common ideal that is at the core of our democracies. 
that we're all better off when every individual in our societies enjoys equal rights and equal opportunities. And it reflects a, a fundamental recognition that if we want to improve the lives of our citizens, it's in our interest to ensure that all communities and individuals can reach their full potential, not just within our own countries, but across North America, across our hemisphere, across the world. Uh, like everything that we're focused on at the summit, we're more effective at delivering on this goal when we work together. That is the entire premise of the North America Leaders Summit. It's animating the work that we're doing together. And the declaration that we're signing today sets out three ways that we're going to do that. So let me just briefly uh, touch on them. First, uh, the fight for greater equity and inclusion begins at home. It begins in Canada. It begins in Mexico. It begins in the United States. In every nation, members of marginalized groups face discrimination. They face barriers that prevent them from participating fully in society. It's a daily reality for people from indigenous communities and communities of African descent, women and girls, LGBTQI plus people, people with disabilities, religious minorities and others, including in the United States. With this declaration, each of our nations acknowledges the responsibility to work with fierce urgency to knock down these enduring barriers and to try to stamp out the prejudice at their root. On his very first day in office, President Biden signed an executive order advancing equity and support for underserved communities through the federal government, bringing our entire government together uh, in an effort to address these challenges. Uh, the willingness of each of our three countries to acknowledge that we all have significant work to do to root out discrimination and inequity at home shows that we're willing to ask the same of ourselves as we're asking of others. And that's vital to our legitimacy when it comes to pursuing the Declaration's second commitment, redoubling our collaboration to advance equity and racial justice around the world. The United States, Mexico, and Canada have long worked together on this goal. Uh, it's at the heart of the commitment that our democracies made to uphold the Inter-American Democratic Charter and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, at the State Department, uh, we're committed to integrating this work across the entirety of our foreign policy. Last June, I had the opportunity to establish our first special representative for racial equity and justice, who is charged with advancing the human rights of people from historically marginalized racial and ethnic communities around the world. And I'm very grateful to have our special representative, uh, Cormier Smith, here with us today. Thank you for the work that you're doing every day. By making this a priority across our bilateral relationships, our multilateral relationships, we know it's the right thing to do, but it's also the smart thing to do. It's in our interest because more equal countries tend to be more stable, they tend to be more secure, they tend to be more prosperous partners. That's good for the United States. Third, we're better at advancing equity and inclusion when we draw on the knowledge, on the expertise, on the experience of leaders outside of government. In that spirit, we're establishing a trilateral racial equity and inclusion expert network to share knowledge, to share best practices uh, for advancing equity and racial justice. That's just one way that we'll integrate our citizens into this effort. Uh, in April, the United States will host the first ever City Summit of the Americas uh, in Denver. Diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility will be a key part of the discussions that we hold there, ranging from strengthening public health and good governance to fostering innovation and clean energy transitions. And these discussions will incorporate not only local officials, but also leaders from civil society, from the private sector, from youth groups, from academia. We have a lot to learn from these groups. Just take a look at our history. Uh, so much of the progress we've made as societies has actually been driven by our citizens. They put a spotlight on discrimination, on inequities. They've led efforts that have inspired people, not only in our own countries, but across borders. This has simply put one of our greatest strengths as democracies, that we trust our people. We trust our citizens to help fix some of our most intractable challenges, to be part of the ongoing process of, as we like to say, in the United States, 
trying to form a more perfect union. That is at the heart of our national experience, of our national enterprise. This idea that it's in the work that we do every single day to make our societies a little bit better, a little bit stronger, a little bit more inclusive. That's how we make progress. In this, as in so much of what we do, we're fortunate to have neighbors who share our highest ideals and a steadfast commitment to keep working to make them a reality. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Muchas gracias, señor. La palabra al canciller. And prior to giving the mic to Minister Ebrar, we recognize the attendance of the U.S. and Canada ambassadors, Mr. Clark, Graham Clark, and the undersecretaries, Brian Nichols, David Morrison, and Michael Grant, who are here in attendance, as well as the parliamentarian secretary, Sidhu, and many high officers representing both countries. A minister, you have the floor. Thank you. In three languages. It is it is a pleasure to see you here and to greet you. Uh, the protocol we are about to sign today, we uh, the method is the other way around. First, we uh, suggest an agreement, and then each sees to it in their own countries. But this agreement came forth because we were at the same uh, point, exactly. Interesting. Three countries thinking exactly the same way in regard to our internal policies. This is uh, quite an opportunity, and we are very lucky because you don't have to start convincing anybody about what is it we have to do. Rather, we should start getting organized, which we are already doing. In the case of Mexico, racism is something quite relevant. For a long time, nobody spoke about racism in Mexico. There are many studies have been undertaken. This is a very important topic. We have visited our history in regard to slavery. Nothing said in textbooks that's in school about slavery in Mexico. So you say, was there any slavery in Mexico? Oh, unheard of. Many people, many people came to Mexico in that regime without. No way, without mentioning the colonial history. So racism is a current topic that has to do with the design of our society, whether we like it or not. Racism in Mexico is a synthesis of the inequalities, gender inequalities, many other inequalities, racial inequalities. And we've made great efforts so far to dismantle the culture of racism. It's culture. This is no easy topic to deal with, but this is a fight with, we must lead to dismantle racism in Mexico. We have 63 live languages, 63 indigenous communities in our countries. President Lopez Obrador requested us to make great efforts to revisit the historical sites in Mexico. And the, the, and, and the situations like the uh, Yaquis in Mexico, we, they were practically exterminated because they were defending their land and their water. That community survived. That was important. So what we've done is go back, not only recognize uh, that foe and uh, ask forgiveness for what happened 200 years ago, but what can we do to do better in the society we currently have. Same thing happened with the Mayans. And I mentioned 63 languages, 63 ethnic groups. Recently in the U.S., a president asked us that the consulates, uh, Mexican consulates in the U.S., when you call them on the phone, don't force everybody to speak Spanish because it's not their maternal language. If you're calling the U.S., people speak Nahuatl, and they work in the U.S. They speak Otomi. They speak Zapoteco. And for the first time in our history, we're taking phone calls in their maternal languages. Well, I only have three languages, but we, we, we need to cover all 63 languages. Hence, 
when we see that in the U.S., the Biden administration has similar concerns based in the U.S. context. And Minister Trudeau, every time we meet, it's a great concern of his. This is no discourse. This really moves him deeply. And we tell the story. I'm telling you now. So let's do something together. So if we're doing something and see along the same lines, let's have a common cause. This is not a, a ran, this is not a random situation because we're sharing values that are tied to uh, and, 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 and pursuing more equal societies, more inclusive, more just. So of course, I congratulate my colleagues and everybody that uh, helped us realize that we are uh, uh, leading a common battle together, but we have the same cause, we have the same motive to go on and to go forward. And prior to signing this document, we need to recognize the presence of the Mexican ambassadors in Washington, Montezuma, and our des design uh, ambassador in Canada, Carlos Joaquin, and Claudia Morales, incumbent at the National Commission to Prevent and Eradicate Discrimination. And now let us uh, sign uh, this uh, very important partnership of North America for equality and racial and racial justice. Concluimos entonces. So the meeting stands adjourned. Merci beaucoup. Buenas noches. Good evening, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.